so I've been away for another little while, um, but I'm back for the next month and a half, I think. Um, well, at least. But yeah, I'm back. Uh, I was in Scotland for a couple of weeks. Um, I obviously I was visiting the family, which was I was good. It was a, a lovely, lovely time. Meeting, uh, what am I trying to say? It was a lovely time seeing the family again. <laughs> I was going to say meeting, like it, like it's the first time. Um, but yeah, it was lovely seeing them again. Uh, there's a reason that I'm kind of hiding this right arm a wee bit. Um, but yeah, so I was up uh, in Scotland for just a couple of weeks because uni has finished now. Um, so I'm free until tomorrow, which I'm gone for a job interview, but I'll say more about that if it happens. But yeah, so I was up visiting the family, uh, I seen my niece, I seen my brothers, I seen my parents, I seen my grands, uh, we all went up to our broth to see my brother, which was the final day of the Premier League, um, and you'll see the story in that of a video coming up on the channel, um, but yeah, so I am back, uh, I'm back doing videos again, um, but the one thing I do want to show everyone is I got a tattoo. Um, my first tattoo, hopefully the first of many, but I went to a place in Lahore, um, in Fife, and a lovely tattooist, I think that's what they're called, um, a lovely tattooist called Marina, um, very calming, obviously, for the first one, I wasn't, I wasn't really that nervous for it, like, it was just a, I didn't care what this has got to feel like, uh, quite yet, but, once it started, it kind of, it, it was calm, um, but, yeah, lovely tattoo, Scott Marina, she was great, um, me and my mum got the same tattoo, different places, different kind of designs, but the same, uh, relative tattoo, so, I'm gonna show you it now. So I got that, um, which is, if you don't know, um, and you probably should at this point, but that is the Manchester B. So uh, in May, on May the 22nd, it was the fifth anniversary since the Manchester bombing. Um, and, sorry, it, it's, it's a little hard to talk about, but I'm fine talking about it now. Uh, I used to hate talking about it when it happened, but I'm fine talking about it now. But. Um, me, you've probably seen the videos on my channel, five years ago, obviously, I went to an Ariana Grande concert in Manchester, um, I was sitting in the crowd, we went through the entire show, this is when I was still into, like, pop music, so I was listening to a lot of, like, popular artists, like, Ed Sheeran and stuff, I, I, I listen to Ed Sheeran now and now again, but, um, I was sitting in the crowd with my dad, uh, it was a great trip, it was a lovely trip down the train, um, and it was, the, the hotel was great, it was nice, we went for something to eat before going to, uh, the Manchester Arena, then we got in, the concert was great, it was a really good performance, uh, Victoria, what's her name, the artist Victoria something, whoever's Ariana Grande's friend or something, um, but she was the, like, opening act, she was really good, um, and then the, the entire show was great, and then at the end, there was like a, it was a popping noise from inside the stadium where the seats are, um, and where the stage is, it was like a popping noise, and we thought it was like a, a speaker, like, popping, or like, turning off, or a light that had, like, blew, like a big light that had blew, and we all kind of heard it, uh, and then everybody started running. And me and my dad were, we didn't really care what happened, like, because when we were getting out, everybody was running, like, down the stairs and past us and barging past and stuff, and we were, me and my dad being, me and my dad were like, right, come on, fucking slow down, like, there's no need to go this fast, there's no need to hurry out of the stadium, just calm down and we'll find out what happened. Um, but when we were coming out, there was, like, a set of doors run that side and then there was the entrance that we came in uh, and then obviously everyone was running round 
um, and so it forced us to go out a side door. Uh, and round the side, there was there was police and stuff, but me and my dad were like, oh, they're probably just there for like security purposes and like making sure people didn't get injured and stuff like that, which is a bit ironic now. Um, but then me and my dad were walking back to the hotel. We were like, come on, we'll just go back. We'll find out what happened tomorrow or whatever it was. So we got, we we're walking to the hotel and I'm saying this because it's a future part of the story. Um, so we walked past a bush um, with a hoodie, like, kind of crumpled in the middle of it. And, like, us being us would usually pick it up, put it on a wall so somebody could see it. Um, but me and my dad were just like, you know what, we'll just get back to the hotel, get something to eat or something to drink, and then we'll go to bed. So, because at this point, we were planning on going to the Etihad to day the stadium tour because obviously I'm a city fan um, so we got to the hotel and the person at the reception desk was like did you hear what happened and we are like what happened and she was like it's on the news so we went air uh, the news BBC news was on and then that's when we found out that there had been a bomb that went off in the entrance of the Manchester Arena uh, killing 22 people and injuring a lot more um, so me and my dad were like, wait, what? A bomb went off in the entrance. Um, and we were kind of like, well, I'm really glad that we didn't go to the entrance for an exit. Um, because then obviously it would have, it would have been a hard to, sorry, hard to see. But then later on in the news, they were, the bomb squad were investigating a bush or a set of bushes because there was a hoodie wrapped in the bushes with a like remote detonator or whatever it was in the bushes um, and it was apparently if anyone had touched it or moved it or whatever um, it would have exploded so I'm glad we didn't pick that up either because me and my dad put two, two in the gear it, was likely to be that hoodie. Um, so we were very lucky. Um, none of us was injured. But I was there. Um, and the fact that I was there. And I, I count myself lucky to this day. That nothing happened to me and my dad. Like I count myself lucky and grateful. That I'm still here today. To tell people what happened. Um, and still shed light on the fact that it did happen. Um, but... Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, the next day, obviously, we were going to go to the Etihad Stadium. We ended up not going. Um, and we just went straight to the train station to get our train back in. And then there was police and SWAT outside the train station with guns and, like, big patrol trucks and stuff. And we were like, oh, my God, like, this is this is happening, like, Everybody was like rushing to get home and rushing to get out of Manchester and like and I mean as they would obviously like that's that, that I don't blame them we were doing the same thing, um but our train was like ages away and then we heard on one of the policemen's radios that there was a suspicious package in why the supermarkets or food courts or somewhere um in the city centre, so they got called away, and then me and my dad were like, it was weird, because you were kind of looking over your shoulder all the time, like, oh, what's happened here, like, what's happened there, like, you know, that, that kind of thing, like, you, you couldn't trust anybody that walked past you, because you were like, well, what if they've got something in their bag, you know what I mean, like, it's these questions that you ask yourself that um, really, I don't know, determine how big of, like, a occasion or how scary of an occasion that was. Um, big wasn't the right word. But then we got home, we met mum, and we were all fine, obviously. Like, it was kind of scary for my mum because she didn't ken whether we were fine or no because she was in bed for work. Um, but then we messaged her saying that, yeah, it's fine, we're all good. Um, but then the next two, two and a half weeks, I was still in high school, and the worst bit 
with everyone coming up and asking, what happened, what happened, how did you feel, did you see it, did you see the bomb, did you see the people, and it's like, fuck off, <laughs> and and I say to people multiple times, like, I don't know why I talk about it, please, I just, I just, why I forget about it, I just don't know why I talk about it right now, if I want to talk about it, I will, um, and then my, like, p- no personal tutor, but the, um, teacher, or, what are they called, like, ma- no, manager, um, the deputy for, um, our house, so we had, like, four houses in high school, so the deputy for our house got me and another lassie, um, out of their classes, and just said, right, this is, like, a pass, if you feel like it's getting too much, if people are asking too many questions, if you feel too uncomfortable or, um, too emotional about it, you can show your teacher this, and you can just get out of class, um, and come see me, and, like, chat away or something, or you can show this to the receptionist, and she'll, uh, call your parents to take you home, and stuff like that, um, so that was, it was nice of them, but I didn't, I didn't use it, because it wasn't that bad, like, I, I was thinking about it a lot, but, but yeah, so, <laughs> I just wanted to tell that story, because I've never actually told that story before, um, but yeah, so, five years on, obviously, May 22nd, we're still mourning the losses of the people that were at the concert that day, because no one should go to a concert and not make it home, so then, me and my mum, obviously my mum wasn't there, so, but she, she felt it for us, because she didn't care if we were affected, or injured, or dead by it, um, so my dad didn't get one, because my dad's not a big tattoo person in the first place, but, so we've been deciding to get this for a couple of years now, like maybe since last year, or the year before, so we finally got it, obviously, it's a, it's pretty cool, it's still in the healing process, so I do need to moisturise it after this video, um, but yeah, so that's my experience, that's where I've been, um, <laughs> I have been writing more music though, I have been thinking of ideas for videos and stuff, I finished my uni work, so summer is a only boils time, baby, um, but yeah, so that was, that's just where I've been in a little story for you, just to welcome you back to the happy, loving, fucking positive channel of Only Boy Productions. Anyway, if you guys did enjoy the video and want to see more, remember to smash the like button on it, put it down in the comments what videos you'd like to see from me in the future, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, goodbye.